highly favored one. Thanks for joining me on this healing stream. Reflection. The title for today's post is Different Ways to Pray. Different Ways to Pray. God requires that we worship him hence by praying to him we develop a closer relationship with him so as to provide our needs and that of other people. The main purpose why we pray is very very important. The reason being that God is pleased when the righteous, in a sense, the upright, prays, as Proverbs chapter 15, verse 8 tells us. And in the process, God also expects us to worship Him, and we do so in prayer. Paul even tells us that. Man's soul is always tested for God, and through prayer, this test is satisfied. As he echoed in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5. Therefore, through prayer, we thank and praise God for his provision and what he has done for us. As Paul encourages the colleague, I mean, Colossian church to do in Colossians chapter 3 verse 7. James also tells us that we pray to know God's will for our lives. James 1 5. We have already made mention that prayer is asking from God and receiving from Him. And so through prayer, God gives us guidance to make important decisions. As Jesus even told his disciples in Luke chapter 6, 12 to 13. And so we ask to pray in time of trouble. James 5, 13, he tells us. So prayer meets the heart's needs. Since through prayer, God supplies our needs. I've already made mention of 2 Corinthians 3, 5. So we pray to gain strength and spiritual power. Ephesians 1, 18 to 20. And more importantly, prayer helps us to fight against spiritual attacks. Ephesians 4, 10. We all know that if we don't pray, we fall into temptation. Even Jesus echoed it to the disciples in Matthew 26, 41. And so prayer is a weapon against evil. Psalm 55 verse 7. So in, in the midst of all these things, the purposes for which we are supposed to pray, the question is, what are the different ways to pray? What are the different ways to pray? Most often, I've had a lot of people, Christians especially, when it comes to prayer, they have a particular way of prayer, maybe one or two ways. But the scripture tells us different ways that we need to pray. And so in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 12 to 13, there's an example over there. The Bible says, in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 12 to 13, And it happened. You know, it's, it always happens. It's still happening. Even today, it's still happening. And it happens normally in individuals' lives, corporate life, congregational life, the community life, the nation's life. But this, it happened in Hannah's life. And it happened, the Bible says, First Samuel chapter 1, 12 to 13, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli watched her mouth. 
the high priest. Now Hannah spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she was drunk. And so this is what we call mind prayer. This involves holding little conversation with God within your head. It can take the form of reading a passage from scripture and then meditating on it and then imagining the scene and placing yourself or myself in it. An example is Hannah's prayer in 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 12 to 13. And that is exactly what Hannah did. And to this, I'll urge our sisters in the Lord. They are very good at doing that, especially when they are in kitchen cooking or when they are doing washing. It's very, very important at times to enter into a time of meditating on God's word. Imagining the scene and placing yourselves in it. And so, mind prayer is one of those ways. Then secondly, vocal prayer. This involves praying aloud. It may be alone or a group or in a group. Especially this happens in the setting of congregational prayer, especially in the church. Remember in the Bible, it got to a certain point that Peter was arrested to be killed. And the Bible says the community of believers met, the congregation prayed. They lifted up their voice and then they prayed. And this is also a picture of the ten lepers. When they met Christ, the Bible says they lifted up their voice and they cried unto the Lord. And so that is what we call vocal prayer. It's very, very important. Then the third aspect of it is the contemplative prayer. Contemplative, contemplative prayer, contemplative prayer is a prayer of resting in the presence of God. Resting in the presence of God. There are times that you need to move away from the normal demands of life and then spend time in a very quiet and solitude area. It could be one hour or two hours. And then which you contemplate, you reflect on your past life. How far the Lord has brought you. Ebenezer, how far the Lord has brought you. And so it's very, very important in such times as that, where you have to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit concerning your past, how the Lord has brought you far, this far, what you have gone through, how the grace and the mercy of God is able to bring you into the current situation that you find yourself. And then the fourth one is reading prayer. Reading prayer. 
It is a prayer with scripture. It is a prayer with scripture where it's a form of liturgical prayer where while you are reading the Bible, you put your name into it. You have to find yourself within the reading of scripture. This is mostly done in Orthodox churches, but you can do it on your own. Especially you take prayer, you take the scripture, and then you read your destiny into it. You read your situation into it. You put your situation into those scriptural passages. And then you declare and possess the promises within that passage. And then the singing prayer. That is the fifth one. Singing prayer. It is praying in the joy of songs and music through hymns alone or in group. You have to sing. Especially the church choir does it a lot. But from time to time, you have to find time alone to sing to the Lord. Especially when you are alone. You have to sing. For instance, Amazing Grace. As you sing through the lines of Amazing Grace, you reflect how gracious the Lord has been to end for you. And that is where your joy wells up within your spirit. And then you reflect on the words of the song writer and then you make it your own. And that is why David says that anytime he sings those songs, he sees it as songs of deliverance. Some of them will never come to you as songs of deliverance, but some of them will come to you as songs of comfort. Some of them will come to you as songs of what? Of healing. And some too will come to you as songs of deliverance. For example, when you are singing Amazing Grace, the words comes to you as a song of what? Comfort and strength to you. And then finally, which is the sixth one, the silent prayer. This is closing out the world from destruction and in silence opening the door of your heart to God there is power in silence you know most of it a lot of people think that prayer is always vocalizing vocalizing it's good to vocalize it's good at times to shout but also it's very also important that from time to time, you take time to find a solitude and a quiet place. And then you shut the whole world away from you. And then you open the door of your heart to God. Remember, the Bible says, the Lord declares, says, I hold the keys of David. When I open, no one closes. When I close, no one opens. So at times, you need to allow the heart of your door to be open to the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember that in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, it says, The Lord is standing at what? At the door of your heart, knocking. And so there are times that you need that solitude and quiet 
places in order to open the door for the Lord to come in and then have a wonderful conversation with you. May the good Lord help you to pursue these ways of prayer. And I believe that by doing that, the good Lord, you'll be able to commune with him and more importantly, receive the touch of God in a different way. My brother, my sister, may the good Lord bless you and continue praying. May you be a prayer addict because there is power in prayer. Bye for now.